Good day. I'm Johan Walters, extraordinary researcher at the Faculty of Theology at the Northwest University. I'm also the co-author with Professor J. N. Kurs Foster of the book with the title Prosperity Ethics, Habits and Virtues of Smart People. This is a, quite a striking title, wouldn't you say? But as you cannot judge a book by its title and by its cover, I want to share with you in a few minutes, firstly, what is the overall theme? And secondly, how you as a reader will benefit when reading this book. Let's reflect on the overall theme that the book addresses. The overall theme is that, like so many times before, the world is going through changes that are driven by mega trends. And the question is, what do you and I need in order to, to prosper and thrive in a changing world? Let me say it again. What do you and I need in order to prosper and thrive in a changing world? The question I suspect can be formulated in many ways, and I'm convinced that you would have a very unique take on it. But essentially, the question is, do you and I have a cutting edge character, competencies, and the right acquired mode of behavior that the economy in particular, and then society in general, will continue to reward in a changing world, and that would result in increased wealth and prosperity. This also applies to life in general, as the changing world requires of you and me to change, not only to sustain our wealth or to become rich, but to thrive and prosper in life in general. We are seeing it now with the COVID-19 pandemic, that some enjoy exceptional prosperity by adapting to the changing conditions whilst others are remaining stuck. Remember the words of Albert Einstein. The measure of intelligence is not the knowledge you possess, but the ability to change. Let me say it again. The measure of intelligence is the ability to change. But the question then is how we should change and adapt in order to be intelligent enough or the word that we use in our title and in the book, how to be smart enough to continue to thrive and prosper during the process of change. The fact of the matter is, we live in exciting times of fundamental changes. There are global mega trends and macroeconomic geopolitical forces that are fundamentally shaping our world and our collective prosperity. The forces are changing the way we live, the way we work, and the way we play, with startling ramifications for my and your future prosperity and well-being. The implications of these mega trends are broad and varied and are approaching us with tremendous opportunities to seize, but also present extremely dangerous risks and uncertainty to mitigate. Whilst these trends are full of opportunities, they are deeply unsettling and are no ordinary disruptions. You may correctly observe that this is not the first time that the civilization has to go through such disruptions and change. The Industrial Revolution of the late 1700s and the early 1800s, and more recently in the 1920s, are still fresh in our collective memory. The difference, however, today is the sheer ambiguity because the disruptive forces appearing everywhere. Disruption happens without pre-warning. They are much more forceful and fast in the impact, and the velocity is quite mind-boggling. So what can you expect by investing your time in reading this book? What can you expect by investing your time in reading this book? But before I answer that question, I want to introduce you to you to my co-author, Professor J. M. Kurs Foster. Professor Foster would explain the context of the book in terms of prosperity as human flourishing, and secondly, the content in terms of global ethics. Professor Foster. Uh, thank you, Johan. Uh, I am uh, Kurs Foster. I'm a post-retirement researcher in the Faculty of Theology of the Northwest University. I think the first question the reader will ask or think about is why from 
a theological perspective. Um, now, of course, today um, the whole concept of interdisciplinary research and intradisciplinary research is uh, uh, very prominent and very popular. And uh, this is um, a venture from outside to combine theological ethics with um, uh, inputs from the side of economics uh, done by, by Johan um, to, to contribute something to people seeking a flourishing life. Now, if we speak about prosperity in this book, we do not focus alone on material wealth uh, and, and uh, um, becoming rich and so forth. It is all about how can we pursue a flourishing personhood in our time and age with these huge megatrends and in a time where the person, the individual person, is very much driven by political and, and economic management. Uh, it seems that it is a current which uh, flows over us and that we may have little to do than just to follow the flow. Um, therefore, we thought, uh, let us uh, say something about moral agency with the aim to assist people to flourish in a time of, of uh, 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 huge changes. We are, our starting point from the part of ethics is the concept of global ethics. Uh, global ethics is uh, possible because of the increased in nature, uh, innate um, moral uh, character of, of, of people. Uh, that's a gift of God. Morals come, come from God and that gift of God to all people uh, to use in order to uh, stay alive and to navigate in times of huge change. And um, the, the values and virtues we are speaking of are values and virtues uh, very prominent, I think, from any religious perspective. I will hand over to Johan again to say something about the structure and the contents of the book. Thank you, Professor. Now let me continue to lay out the book and the framework of the book. The book is divided in three parts. Part one is a brief analysis of three most fundamental megatrends. From these megatrends, by way of deductive reasoning, we have established the competencies that you and I should acquire. The second part deals with the habits or acquired mode of behavior we should master. And then the third part deals with the qualities of character you and I should develop to give us directive guidance during these transformative years. This is important. The virtues are giving us directive guidance during these transformative periods. In short, the book presents a fresh perspective on the competencies, habits, and qualities of character you and I should develop so that we can continue to thrive, prosper, as the megatrends are changing our world. Let me give you a short and a small peek into what you will discover in reading this book. In the previous economic boom in the 1920s, it was not required to the same extent as today to embrace diversity in order to prosper and to thrive. Likewise, as the world is now becoming a global village where people cohabitate, relating with each other, partnering with each other, though they have different beliefs, principles, values, the virtue of self-differentiation is now the golden key. Getting my point? So what will you benefit as either a scholar or as a layman? 
as Albert Einstein said, you will gain intelligence because this book will give you a toolbox of competencies, habits, and traits of character that if you master them, you will have the ability to change and enjoy exceptional prosperity. Yes, some would like to rather use the words to create wealth, to become rich, or to be extraordinarily successful. Whichever way, as we will explain in the book, to be prosperous and thriving is more than material wealth and exalted status. Let me tell you, I myself have applied these tools when I competed in the Abbott World Marathon Series. I competed standard marathons in New York, Chicago, Boston, London, Berlin, and in Tokyo in just three years, just before I turned 60. I have I am convinced today that the tools work, even in running marathons, let alone implying it in your business or in your daily life. The book is furthermore written, I would say deliberately, in a fresh narrative style that is more customary to postmodernist scholarships and would be easy to read and comprehend by scholars in ethics, moral opinion makers, Yes, also politicians, business executives, new youngsters entering the marketplace, and those who would like to make a success of their startup businesses. Yes, even to students and scholars at tertiary and secondary training institutions. Enjoy reading. Thank you.